We are back to order at this time, and the next we have is I-1 is the EDC quarterly update for the period of January 2011 to March 2011. I will ask Mr. Cox to come forward, as well as anybody else that is going to be presenting with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening, Commissioners and, and um, Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney, Ms. Honeycutt. Thank you for the kind opportunity that you provide to us to come on a quarterly basis and make a report. I think we have provided a report, and it was a, a preliminary report. Uh, we have an addendum, and I think, Samantha, you just sent that down the aisle. Uh, as part of the report that was submitted, about halfway through in your book is the proposed EDC budget for the 2011-12 uh, year, which starts on July 1. Um, this budget uh, was approved by our board, by the EDC board, back in uh, February and would go into effect July 1. I think last year it was very late in the year, very late in the budget cycle uh, when it uh, actually, uh, we had the discussion with you all about it. So I wanted to include that there for you for your information and um, let you know we worked hard to get that to you in a much more timely fashion this year. So thank you for that opportunity. In the book, uh, there are a number of reports, and I think part of the addendum that uh, Samantha just passed out, in the book there was a February uh, 2011 North Carolina economic overview. Well, the March economic overview actually came today. It's virtually the exact same picture, but I think we included it in that addendum for you. Uh, there's not any especially good news. You all know what the unemployment rate is. Dropped ever so slightly, I think, from 10.8 to 10.3 from the last reporting period, and, and it's still an issue of great concern for us. As you uh, come to the conclusion of the National Economic Update, it's the page that's about two-thirds blue. Following that, we've included some information, and part of this may be in, in the addendum that we uh, sent to you. We've been working, uh, when I say working, we put this report together some time ago, and it's, if you've never taken a long look at it, it's a little bit uh, hard to get your hands around, a little bit hard to get your mind around, and we don't really intend to go down deep uh, drilling into what these uh, numbers mean, but we have provided for you a retail marketplace profile or what is also called a leakage study. I know that you're having some work done this year, and I think you can use this as a baseline. Uh, this is a retail leakage study. So what it shows is the activity that goes on from consumers who live within the market who are purchasing retail goods. What it does not take into account is when a business buys from another business. And I think in listening to your conversations over the last several months, that's one thing that you're very interested in. We've actually tried to, and without any success, trying to find an, an example of a study that's already been done on a business leakage, um, and, and we'll still look. And if we find something that we think is helpful, we'll send it on to uh, the county manager. So you can take a look at that, um, again, for your own information. We also have provided some additional data with respect to the North America Industrial Classification Systems, that's the NAICS, that's how businesses are uh, understood by the United States government. So you'll see as you're going down this leakage report, uh, for example, 4413, which are automotive parts, and 4461, which is health and personal care. Well, without really drilling down, you may not exactly know what that is. So we've included a couple sheets so that you can take a look at that as well. And then we drill down specifically on a quarterly census of employment wage, uh, wages with respect to another aspect that economists often look at with respect to a local economy, and that is a location quotient calculator. Uh, again, drilling down in the numbers, you'll see that we gave you the North Carolina statewide uh, information with respect to the job sector by sector. We've given you the MSA that we fall in, which is the uh, Charlotte Gastonia Concord MSA. So it'll show you where we are as a whole region comparing uh, us to the nation. And then the final column is comparing Cabarrus County as, the, as a single entity, not only to our own MSA, but to what's going on nationally. So you can see how we can compare. And you'll get a couple of pages of data 
on each of those NAICS uh, codes. Uh, then coming to the last page of that report, uh, which begins uh, with, uh, it's about three pages in and it says in, I think it's green, uh, percent of employment calculated from quarterly census of employment and wages data. Uh, and then it gives you the actual location quotient uh, by sector. And anything that is one or higher means that you in particular are strong. One or higher is great. One or lower is something that you're weak. So you can look in every sector and see how we are as a standalone county, how we are in comparison to our MSA, and how we are with respect to the nation in each of those quadrants. And as you're thinking about economic development, you may say, or you may think, well, we're particularly weak in this. So you can see if your idea matches with what the data actually shows, and then if as part of what you do with respect to working on the local economy, you identify a sector that you especially want to work in, this will give you uh, some of the information you, you would need in making those decisions. We've also given you a shift share analysis, and it begins on the page that says analysis of employment changes for Cabarrus County. And that takes you from uh, literally 1990 where our uh, the number of people employed in our, our, in our local economy was to our rapid rise of the numbers of folks in our local economy who were employed and where we've been over the course of the last couple years. And then again, you can see table one, employment changes in Cabarrus County from 2007 to 2009. It shows you that most of the local jobs were lost in about three areas, none of which you'd be surprised by, manufacturing, construction, and information. And again, we've given you information with respect to what each, each of those categories are. And then you'd have to really be interested in this to want to read it. I, you know, take it someplace where if you fall asleep, nothing bad will happen to you or anybody else. But you'll want to read the national growth component, um, the industrial mix component, and then the competitive share. And then it helps you draw some conclusions. These are not our own. These uh, come as part of this uh, study but at least it gives you good information to think about. And then the last page of this particular section is a distribution of employment for 2009. And the reason we're using 2009 is because those are the last good data that exist. We were actually hoping with a census that we would find something that uh, was more specific or more relative or reflected even what's gone on with the uh, Great Recession. Those numbers and that data just don't exist in a way that would be helpful to us or or to you. So it's lots of heavy economic data um, that you may want to analyze for yourself, pass on to Dr. Schumann, uh, but to take a look because it will help give you a, a pretty holistic sense of where we are as a standalone, as an MSA, and as uh, where our economy is with respect to the whole country. So I think uh, Anna Lou's going to talk about our website update, Samantha's going to talk about Roots, and then Ryan's going to talk about our, uh, our projects report. Before you step aside, Mr. Cox, will you be coming back up? Because there's a couple of questions I have specific to some of your visits and... and... Sure. Okay. Um, and maybe you want to do that now or whenever you like. What would you prefer? I mean, I didn't know if you wanted to have... Let me ask you, um, there's a couple of things in, that you had lo lunch with local business. When you have that listed down, is that local businesses that you met with a group of local businesses, or was it um, local one business that you were talking to specifically for whatever issue? Yeah, and I could go back on my calendar and look and see exactly who that was. If it says business, it would be one person, okay. but it would be one person with respect to um, an economic development related piece of the business, and not like. Uh, for example, I might have breakfast with a business person and it's solely related to Chamber of Commerce functionality, not related specifically to an economic development function. Any that would be listed here would all be economic development. And, and if you have specific dates, I'd be happy to go back and... I, just would, I would assume that it was just one, but I didn't know if it was multiple that, that you were meeting with at, at one time. The other is that you had a reference to or an entry of uh, a lunch with county manager and staff, and I was wondering how that went. 
uh, the lunch was great. <laughs> uh, all locally sourced, I think. Uh, I thought it was excellent. Uh, John was very kind to invite us to meet uh, Shannon Johnson, the new project director of the Council of Sustainable Local Economy. Ha, how's that? <laughs> Uh, and uh, the food dude was in there as well, and the chair of uh, Aaron, that would be Aaron. Um, <laughs> Hyla Jackson, the board chair of the chamber, was there. Lynn Safer was not able to be there, and I think four or five of uh, the folks I work with, okay. uh, we actually met in this building. So, yeah, I, I thought that was great. You also referenced um, an out, uh, speaking to an out-of-town group in Kannapolis. Right. Um, Is I that thought, I thought long enough, I could tell you. the can It's a county in North Carolina. Uh, it was... Uh, a commissioner, a mayor, a community okay. college, a uh, chamber of commerce, economic development, travel and tourism. They brought about, I don't know, I'd say f 12 or 15 people, and they took a tour of Kannapolis and the research campus, and they had lunch at 46. Uh, I spoke, Irene Sachs spoke, and Donna Carpenter spoke. Okay. And then by, finally, you talked about you had one entry of Volt, V O L T. Yes, you would know. You and I spoke about that project today. Ah, okay, so that's that's what I was wondering. I didn't know if it was okay. It is Project Bolt. Okay, thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good evening. I'm happy to inform you that we are restructuring and redesigning our website. Um, we're just currently in the process. It's not up and running yet. The new website will feature key properties. It'll be segmented, uh, we'll be segmenting the information a little bit better into industries such as energy and life science. And we're gonna revise the navigation so it will create traffic funnels and guide people through the site a little bit better. All of these changes will allow us to, to increase measurability and conversion points. So by that, I mean we'll be able to tell you the number of inquiries through the website the number of downloads and the number of times people click through the website. And it will be able to better understand why they're coming and what they're looking for. And um, I'll, be, I'll be able to give you some better information, detailed information on, on that coming up in the future. That's my report on the website. Let me see. <clears throat> Any questions for Mrs. Wilson at this time? Can you explain business capital event conference call? Yes, we had talked about that in the last quarter. We worked with RCCC okay. and the Small Business uh, Center to put on a program at Catawba College. <coughs> and so that was just a follow up to that event. Okay. That was very well attended. There were about 40 small businesses and entrepreneurs that attended. Was that in was that some of them from Cabarrus or were they a lot from Rowan or what was, do you remember what the mix uh, the was? The mix. Um, it was probably it was probably about half and half. The majority of those who presented were from Cabarrus. Okay. Any other questions for Ms. Wilson? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. If you'll scroll through the packet, um, through the project activity and the budget, or excuse me, through our staff activity, you'll get to the project report. Um, it's in the light blue. Uh, with the bar and pie graphs on the next page. Um, as we mentioned earlier, when we had to uh, submit the information to the um, clerk was on the 8th. So um, as of today, there's been a few updates to our prospect report. We're actually, um, we've entered two more projects into the system, bringing us up to 48 active. Um, for the quarter, um, we've had four projects move to located file, uh, which is where we prefer. Um, all projects end up. Those projects represent $85 million of investment and 160 new jobs to Cabarrus County. Um, if you look at what we're currently um, in the process of recruiting, um, it doesn't total at the bottom of this page, but I've pulled together some of the information for you um, just so you know what our prospects are looking for. Um, on average, um, our prospects who are looking for acreage um, desire th about 53 acres. Um, if they're looking for a building, um, they're looking for about 227,000 square feet. Um, ceiling height's very important in the commercial real estate business. Um, looking for at least 20 foot ceilings. Um, we actually got a request um, last and within the last two weeks for 40 foot ceilings, and that's becoming more of the standard. 
um, jobs, the big number, um, on average our projects are about 272 uh, new jobs. And on average our projects are roughly $51 million. So on average our projects are very strong. If you add up um, the total of what we're looking at right now, um, the, if, and obviously every project won't land in the community, but um, that would represent 7,900 new jobs and $1.038 billion of investment. So um, definitely seeing an uptick. As you can see on the next page, we're up in the first three months of, um, of this calendar year, um, but it's halfway through our fiscal year, actually in the third quarter of our fiscal. Um, you can see tremendous increases, even um, a, a nice uptick and then an explosion in March, 194%. That's exactly what we're looking for. That shows our activities are, are strong and the target sectors we're recruiting in are definitely paying off for us. If you look at project type, there's two uh, definitions we use. Project type, as we look at it, um, basically describes the real estate to some degree. It's hard to do that sometimes. Some projects, as we discussed, will have a mix of manufacturing and distribution, but we try to go to their primary use. Within the manufacturing segment, we're seeing uh, the most active sectors are aerospace and aviation, um, food and nutrition, automotive and motorsports, consumer goods, and plastics. Um, that's a very strong manufacturing mix at 63%. We're, we're always encouraged because those projects lead to good jobs and high investment numbers. Uh, if you look at our sources, we're actually um, continuing to do very well on direct calls. Those are companies that come to us directly um, through no third party. Um, our third parties that we work with are the Charlotte Regional Partnership and the Department of Commerce. Um, as I mentioned previously, sometimes we'll be working with commerce and the partnership at the same time, but we treat the active lead as whoever brings it to us first. Oftentimes, commerce will go to the partnership, then it'll come to us. In that scenario, we credit the partnership. Um, our ED partners are the folks here on the board, uh, as well as city council and town councils who give us a uh, heads up on a project as you're traveling, as you're communicating with other businesses, let us know, we'll be glad to reach out. Um, folks who are in our, um, on our EDC board, as well as the CVB board and chamber board, they provide us a good source of leads. Uh, the international versus domestic mix uh, has stayed pretty steady for the last, um, last few reporting sessions. The companies represented in our international mix are Austria, France, Norway, uh, there's two German firms, Italian firm, a Norwegian firm, and a non-identified European firm. That's simply identified as a European company, didn't want to identify their country. Um, missions, conventions, and education. Um, we attended the S&D show in Savannah. That was a joint venture with the Concord Regional Airport. Um, we helped man their booth. Um, that was a show which um, the S&D folks are the folks who send jets to Concord. So that's good news for the county and sales tax revenue on fuel. And potentially we want their jets too. So that's what we were pushing for, um, our low tax rate and all the amenities there nearby. Um, the MDM plastic show is a conglomeration show. MDM represents medical device manufacturers, but there's also folks in the chemical trade and some other um, elements there as well. Uh, we also went with our uh, local short line railroad um, to call on some folks in Houston um, fairly recently, and that was an excellent uh, trip. I think we're going to have, uh, we already have a project out of it, so um, that's exactly what we're shooting for. Um, also, uh, we'll do a little promotion here for Samantha, who's getting ready to come up. She completed her um, EDI Institute from the University of Oklahoma, which is the first step to uh, her sitting for the CECD exam, which is our, um, our professional equivalent to a CPA. So um, she will be sitting for that exam pretty soon. She still has a few years before she gets the required um, uh, professional experience, but she'll get there very soon. We're looking forward to having her certified on the staff. Um, that concludes my report, unless there's any further questions. Can you talk about the aerospace trade show? I think you went to it. The S&D show? Well, I thought that you, in your timeline, you had aerospace trade show. Let me see here. That may have been a conference call. You, Let me, you know the date? Let me see if I can't find it. February the 9th, um, aerospace trade show. And then you had a project visit on the 10th, project oh, visit on the 10th. That was the S&D show. 
uh, we marked it as aerospace. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, as I get a chance to look through it, is there any, I will probably contact you with some more questions. Absolutely. Thank you. Any other questions from, thank you. Right, thanks. Mrs. Moose. Good evening. The next page of our report lists the contacts we've recently had with some of our existing industries. Um, you'll see in the chart we listed those companies by name and also the reason for our visit, if it was a Cabarrus Roots existing industry program visit or just a simply to meet with that existing industry. Our Cabarrus Roots existing industry program is a continuation of our recruitment efforts. We look forward to continuation, um, continuing our relationship with these folks listed here and also with more relationship building with our existing industries. The next section of your report is the appendix. Um, we've included recent articles, announcements, et cetera, that we thought would be of interest. Uh, we've also included an update on Sailguard's progress and a picture um, that was taken a few weeks ago. We're really excited about that. Also on that page is a link. Um, please share that with those that would be interested. They are in the hiring process now and they've listed jobs that they're hiring for. Two other companies that we did want to mention that were in the hiring process are Connections and Wayne Brothers. We have magazines to pass out to you guys. This is the uh, Business in North Carolina magazine. Um, included in this, I believe it's the April edition, was an article highlighting um, Cabarrus County. Uh, since we were working on a similar article for the Chamber's Images magazine, we also wanted to include uh, an article that highlighted the Cabarrus County sustainability efforts, and it's included in here, and we've pro provided those for you as well. Thank you. How is the Cabarrus Roots program coming? Very good. Uh, we average about five to ten visits a month. Um, if you have any businesses that would um, benefit from us coming out, uh, please let us know. Or is... Is there a lot of questions about, um, or is there any questions about, you know, are they getting a better feel for the economy? Are they getting a better feel for things moving Absolutely. forward? Um, um, small expansions, we, you know, hear of that. Um, folks that are able to hire some folks that maybe they had laid off in the past months, able to hire those, um, those employees back. So, yes, we're definitely hearing an uptick. Okay, great. Thank you very much. To hitchhike on that comment, we were all at the Connections office the other day, and um, some of Connections' work is seasonal. So, you know, they'll ramp along like this, and then they'll ramp up, and then they'll trough down. And they're kind of in a little trough, or have been for a while, but um, he told us the other day that they're, the trough this year is higher than it's ever been and that they're expecting to hire additional folks uh, very shortly. So we see that as good news. Um, anecdotally, there are folks who are hiring. Um, whether or not companies are actually spending money or not is another thing, but we do think hiring is a, is a very good thing. As another example, we had lunch with Marcus Childs the other day. Marcus is the plant manager for the Selgard. Uh, project and the good news he gave us there was and as you know their plant was originally about hundred and fifty thousand square feet and I think he told us uh, they're actually building it to two hundred and forty thousand square feet their original investment I want to say was fifty seven million and with their new investment total investment there will be hundred and twenty two million their additional new jobs were just over two hundred uh, they'll be adding an additional hundred to that so um, $122 million of investment, 240,000 square feet under roof, over 300 local jobs. Higher paying, advanced manufacturing, energy related, uh, all very good. Uh, I want to thank Amy Hawkins and, of course, John's staff. We pitched this idea to him. He thought it was great. Amy actually wrote uh, most of the um, article that is going to go in both of those publications. Of course, we have to submit it to the publisher, and then they edit it for space, so this may not look at all like what you wrote, but it was good enough to get the whole process started. So thank you very much, and if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them at this time. Any questions? Well, as I get a chance to go through it, I'd like to understand it better, but thank you very much for coming to us and letting us know what y'all are doing. Thank you for the opportunity. We appreciate it. Thank you. 
Next we have is, um, are there any updates or reports from this board to, or from each individual board for the liaisons that we're serving on? I know we've had a busy couple of months um, on all of our schedules. Commissioner Poole. Yeah. So, well, this one isn't a liaison, but I do want to make sure everybody knows about it. Um, I don't know how many of you got out to see the wall that was out at Franklin's Park. But, uh, we went out late in the evening, which was kind of cool because there were just a few people there, and uh, um, it is a quite quite moving event. Um, I got my students could get extra credit for going, so I got they had to bring me proof, so I had a picture of the wall, and Brittany in front of the wall. She had to make sure she was there, so they had to give me proof that they were actually there. And then what made me the happiest, and this is just her story, she got her grandmother to go with her, and her grandmother found names on the wall from friends that she had known. Um, and she said it was extremely moving and emotional, and she was glad for the extra credit, but mostly glad that she spent um, time with her grandmother out there looking at the wall. And the name that she found on the wall, because that was another thing they could do, of course, is uh, Donald M. Shu, Concord's um, latest uh, Vietnam, what do I want to say, um, soldier to be identified and to come, come home. Um, there is going to be a ceremony on Saturday uh, downtown, and I would encourage citizens to show up to recognize Sergeant First Class Donald Shu. And the city is handling it. I believe you're going to, mm -hmm. to represent there. us there. Um, the note I got is for us to be there around 1030, so I'm presuming it's going to start closer to 11. But it's supposed to start at 11 o'clock, is what I understand. So I would encourage, in our, encourage our citizens to come out and um, participate in the event. I think it will be a very emotional event on Saturday. Thank you. <laughs> Any other? Commissioner Miesmer. Just like to give an update on the Cabarrus County Youth Council. Um, they've had four or five meetings thus far, and they're really getting on their feet trying to decide uh, where they're going to go and what type of group they are. And um, I've been very proud of them. I went to the meetings and tried to help them along. Um, on Thursday, we're going to stuff Easter, ba Easter bags, treat bags for Meals on Wheels um, recipients that will go out um, Easter Monday. So we're looking forward to that. And, um, I believe the youth council will be given a, um, report to the board of commissioners in May. Good. So should hear a lot from them. Good. Well, I think it, uh, this is winding down a, a month of a lot of activity as commissioner Poole had mentioned, uh, as well as commissioner Meesmer, uh, in regards to uh, the efforts, I want to call a call of special attention to the, uh, tremendous efforts that Dana Ur and all of the library staff as well as the friends of the library did in regards to the one book one community it was a, a very good program it was capped by a meeting on i think it was april the 9th that uh, commissioner um, caruth was able to attend i understand that commissioner um, burridge was uh, working too hard in the yard with with tilling that could make it that night um, but that was a very good opportunity to listen to uh, Mr. Tim O'Brien talk about what he wrote about and, and the significance of what he thought. And I, it was very interesting. And I would, uh, I want to really, uh, my hat goes off to Dana and all of the people that put a lot of time and effort into that one book, one community. And the tough thing about it is when you have a program such as that, you raise the bar really high. So it'll be interesting to see what happened next year. I think there's some discussion about different books. Uh, my kids are very excited about some of the books that are being discussed about what may be selected. Um, and it, it's going to be, a, it, it really is neat. I think, I hope, I commend it to everybody to go out and look at that. And another thing I wanted to touch base is Mr. Phillips said earlier that, that a lot of things that are going on in the county, or at least with the Health Alliance, that uh, other counties wish they had implemented. And that's not the only program that's doing well. Um, the Food Policy Council, you know, we hear about it uh, routinely from other counties as to we're out there, we're, we're, we're leading the way. Um, so I think it's very important. And, and Commissioner Burridge and Commissioner Meesmer, I think that you all have seen it for a little bit, but, but when we have the NCACC come in next in August, many of the meetings that we will attend, um, it's amazing 
how they're requesting how we're doing things because of um, what we're doing. And I, and I commend the staff. They've, they've done a tremendous job in thinking outside of the box, looking for different ways to solve problems, looking for ways to resolve the issues. And I think that, that uh, we may, we may um, argue about some things, but at the end of the day, we're, we're working towards the betterment of all. And I think that's, that's what speaks volumes throughout the county. And that's one thing I'm, I'm very proud of what we do in staff and what we do um, what we do as a community. You know, it, it, it truly is a special place. But uh, that's all that I've got to say. If anybody else have anything to say? Do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries.